Guys, welcome back to what's going to be a very cool episode because we have all three of the RX models. We have the RX 300, the RX 350, and the RX 450H. And on top of that, we have them in all three grades as well. We have the Luxury, we have the F Sport, and we have the Sports Luxury. Like, we got all of them. Like, <laughs> that's way too cool. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for joining in. If you haven't already watched any of my videos, my name is Serge, and we like to do some really cool car reviews on this channel. And today we're going to be answering the question, if you're looking to buy an RX, which model should you buy? The 300, the 350, or the 450? And which one should you buy? The Luxury, the S Sport, or the Sports Luxury? And today we're going to be doing a walk around on the outside, seeing the differences between the Luxury, the F Sport, and the Sports Luxury. Then we're going to be doing a interior look around, seeing what the difference is between the three as well. And then we're going to finish off with a drive in each car, and see how each engine performs, and see what's different in them, and see how they feel on the road. So guys, let's just get straight into it. So here we have it, we have all three models. Now I've lined them up for the Luxury, the F Sport, and the Sports Luxury. So that's the most entry level, that's the mid range, and that's the top of the range. And we're going to see what the differences are between the three. Now, while we're standing here at the front, you're going to notice that two of these look the same, and one of them looks a little bit different, yes. So the Luxury and the Sports Luxury have the same front end. They got the same grill, the same front spoiler there at the front, and the F Sport has the F Sport grill and the F Sport highlights. And also you'll notice it's got like this front splitter as well. So it's a little bit different. These two here, since it's the mid range and the top of the range, have the triple LED high beams. Whereas the Luxury only has the single LED high beams there. The mid range and the top of the range, the F Sport and Sports Luxury, also have a camera at the front. So they've got front goggles there. But otherwise, if these were driving past you, it would be rather hard to tell the difference. Like, they're all obviously very similar. Now, they are all in the same color, white. However, the Sport does get the white Nova color. So this is actually a little bit brighter than the Sonic Quartz, which they call this here in Australia. The white Nova for the F Sport, you'll notice, it's just a little bit brighter. And also the F Sport, you'll notice to have the black mirrors, whereas the Luxury and the Sports Luxury are color coded. Now, if we come to the side, the Luxury gets 20 inch wheels as standard on the 350, but 18 inch wheels on the 300. So, between the Luxury on the 300 and the 350, there are three differences, and I'll list them here. We're here looking at a 350 Luxury, and really, really nice on the sides. Like, it has that real sporty look. As far as family SUVs goes, I think the RX is one of the better ones. Now coming up to the rear, you'll notice it has the dual exhaust system there, silver highlights around the exhaust, and obviously that's not the exhaust, the exhaust is all the way in there. <laughs> that's some nice chrome on the bumpers, <laughs> and then got some nice chrome here as well. So coming over to the F Sport, and first thing you'll notice is these very sporty 20 inch wheels of course same size as the luxury but 20 spoke in a dark charcoal gray the body and everything is still the same but you may notice on the side here there's no more chrome strip like the luxury gets it but the f sport doesn't so they're still trying to darken the car wherever they can coming up to the rear it still has the dual exhaust system but it's also got a splitter here as well. Like, and it also has this charcoal chrome strip at the back. This strip here is now dark chrome as well. So they're obviously trying to darken all the features of the F Sport because that color chrome is at the front as well. Now coming over to here, the Sports Luxury. Now we do have to mention that this is a hybrid. So the hybrid will always get a bumper like this. They're gonna hide the exhausts, and you also may notice that the Lexus badge has this blue around it, indicating it's uh, electrified. <laughs> In the Sports Luxury, this has now gone to light chrome. Now let's have a look at the boot. And a very big boot, look at that. Plenty of space there, of course. A nice big subwoofer there. You do get these little hangers for shopping. And because we're now looking at the Sports Luxury, you get electric folding rear seats, look at this. <laughs> Does it get much easier than that? And to top it all off, you can bring it back up from here if you like. 
Look at that. Doesn't get much easier than that. <laughs> now, if we have a look at the boot of, let's say, the F Sport, the boot size, of course, is still the same. However, instead of buttons, you get these levers. And we go whoosh. And the seat goes flying forward. And same thing on the right one. Whoosh. Look at that. Plenty of big boot. But unlike the sports luxury, I can't bring them back up. So I have to go on the side. And using all my manpower. There we go. Bring this. <laughs> oh man, the sports luxury. Like, come on. Come on. I want to say that's a bit much, but that's freaking cool. That's very cool. And the luxury here as well. Now something to note, all three of the range get electric boot openers. Uh, but same thing here. Look at that big plentiful boot. Something you can do on all three models is actually lock the car from the boot. So if I press that button for one second, it comes closing down and the car's already locked. So you can literally take your shopping, press that button and walk off into the distance. Actually, that's the shops right there. So. You're probably not going there because you've just done the shopping and come here anyways 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 now let's have a look at the insides and let's start off with the luxury have a look at how nice the interior is set up like that is just gorgeous and look at these seats these genuine leather seats with this white stitching oh they're so comfortable and you do get fully electric seats with lumbar support as well now as we were talking about in the 300 you do get the fake leather seats with no air conditioning and no heated seats but they are still electric so you still got that setting there as well however the 300 does not get the seat memory the 350 does as standard here's the door finish and let's have a look at the back and look at that plenty of space plenty of space we have plenty of headroom like look at that and this car does have the sunroof option so that is plenty of headroom and legroom is amazing as well like look at this look at all this legroom we have and even though this is a huge center console still plenty of space but anyways let's turn her on look at that. the steering wheel goes down and out and my seat moves forward with our steering wheel, of course, we've got all the buttons here for our radio control. And we've got all the buttons here for our screen in front of us. Now, yes, it still has a tachometer. There's no digital display here. So if you do get the RX without a heads up option, there's going to be no digital readout of the speed. Who needs to decipher this in the 21st century? Uh, but luckily this one has been optioned up with a heads-up display. There you go. That's the heads-up display We've got the navigation on the right. We've got the speed. We got a bird and we got what gear we're in <laughs> Anyways, we come to the center screen here now. What's cool is this is touchscreen What's not cool is how far away that is <laughs> Because how can I put it if I was to sit in my normal driving position and if we have a look the touchscreen is all the way there and with my hand out reached all the way without bending forward I'm still two inches away from the screen so to use this touchscreen either you have to be the passenger or you have to always go in and then you have to like I have to be bending this far forward to utilize it so as much as people say they hate the touchpad I actually prefer the touchpad over the touchscreen because I can't even reach the touchscreen but anyways, it is a massive screen there, so it is very easy to see, very easy to utilize. And you do get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as standard. And this here has all of our media control buttons, all of our air conditioning controls. Down here, we have our wireless phone charger, as well as two charging USB ports. Now, if you're not using the charger to charge your phone, what you can do is just stick your phone in here and it's just a nice little handy spot for your phone because let's be real we always used to put our phone in the cup holder uh, now we can actually utilize the cup holder for what it's needed um, but speaking of the cup holders look at this Whoosh. now we got a deep ass cup holder and if you push this button it comes straight up <laughs> that's really cool because let's say you have a bottle as I magically have now instead of it sitting so up in the air push it down and it's nice it's underneath the gear lever 
and it just looks good it's a very clean finish now up here in front of the gear shift selector we have our handbrake electronic handbrake auto hold functions and we have our heated seats and air conditioning seats here as well uh, back here we have our selector for eco normal and sports um, all-wheel drive lock because this is an all-wheel drive on demand and that there is your traction control button we leave that on all the time our touchpad so again this is for the screen in front of you and don't believe in the reviewers that say oh it's the worst thing ever made because you know what it just isn't that hard and i'm using my left hand i'm not even left-handed anyways in here we have my iphone cable plenty of storage for all your goodies and it's like a bin so it comes out then you get even more storage that's huge our start stop button we have a few buttons here our heads up display boot opener and automatic high beams speaking of headlights are automatic and wipers are automatic as standard and the seat memory saves not only the seat but saves your steering wheel as well because your steering wheel is all electric and it saves your mirrors now i've jumped into the back and i'm sitting on the outside seat and we have plenty of headroom like look at that that's uh that's my hand there so plenty of headroom there as the outside passenger let's jump in the middle oh my head doesn't touch now these lights are in an awkward spot so if you're leaning forward like you're sort of there you're sort of there uh, but if you're leaning backwards let's put this up if you're leaning backwards again let's go let's see three three out of my four fingers out of my five five fingers five is the thumb finger. anyways the best thing is even though it's an all-wheel drive system look at that this is flat this is flat like the floor is flat so you still get plenty of space even if you're a middle passenger of course air con vents in the back and we have usb ports at the back as well plenty of space here for stuff and cup holders if you are sitting in the outside and a bit of storage there as well now in the luxury the panoramic roof is an option and it is absolutely sensational and of course you can open it as well So look at that how cool is that now let's have a look at the inside and oh look at this sensational interior look at these red leather seats that's stunning the aluminiumized finished pedals now in the f-sport and speaking of aluminiumized you get these little accents on the doors aluminiumized and the center console also aluminiumized just to give it a little bit more sporty feel and of course on the steering wheel you're going to get that little f sport badge there and you do get red leather stitching as well on the steering wheel look at that now you may notice that these seats are different not obviously just the color but the seats themselves so these are the f sport seats so they're real hugging real supportive and still rather soft like you can see how easily the padding just squeezes there and even at the bottom plenty of padding just to show you they are very hugging like look at that they're very tight very tight seats and even at the legs here they're soft yet hard at the same time so you can feel very supported in these seats and actually if you do like that sensation these are awesome seats now what's good is that they're not like the european bucket style seats which are really hard really dense um they're still soft they're still comfortable they are harder than the luxury or the sports luxury seats but they're not hard um hopefully that makes sense hopefully that makes sense but let's have a look at the dash and we have a nice digital display at the front look at that that's awesome and of course the touch screen there doing its animation thing our, our odometer there and it is a Look at that nice cool animation if we go into sports mode it changes if we go sports plus it doesn't change but it just says plus in the middle but look at that back to normal and eco nothing changes just a little bit of an eco symbol there now on the side there of course you've got different things to go through look at this look how much boost your car is making <laughs> or how much g you're creating oh my goodness 
Of course, this screen here, that's the exact same as the touchscreen and the luxury. Everything down here is the same as well. And the only thing is different is you'll notice this badge here for the Mark Levinson. So you know you got the Mark Levinson sound system, which I can't show it to you because, well, firstly, you're not going to hear it through the speaker system, but the music is just... And the best part is the RX gets dual glaze windows. So when you're driving, it's so quiet. And it's like you're sitting and there's an orchestra playing around you. It is sensational. You need to try it. And if it's an option, because I know in America you can choose as a single option, definitely, if you appreciate good music, definitely tick it. It is, ah, oh, the best. Anyways, coming back to the center here, we have the wireless phone charger, we have the USB chargers, heated and cooling seats, your electric handbrake, auto hold, and your gear shift selector with manual Tiptronic, which you do get these nice pedals. Of course, the touchpad there and our eco normal sports settings there. Now, you do get these buttons here and you got the heads up display button to turn that on and off. Um, so this comes standard in the F Sport, as does this button here, which is your 360 degree view. So doesn't matter where you are, you will get a 360 view and as soon as you put the car into reverse You got the reversing camera and you got the 360 degree view and of course the sensors which show up there as well as there um, And if you go forward, you'll see the camera turns off, but let's say you got really close to something Look at that the camera will come on automatically and it'll show you how close you are to something Of course the sensors are going off there as well as there now all these Lexuses with the front camera have this little highlighted black area I have no idea what that is and it's annoying as anything because if you look carefully you can see straight through it like you can see the car behind it but you're always gonna get this here which makes no sense but look at that nice clear photo of the car in front look at that nice and close get the RX to kiss <laughs> And of course the reversing camera with the line guide system, you know, so of course we've got the panoramic sunroof there as well Now let's have a sit in the back. Look at these gorgeous seats That is stunning And what's awesome with the f-sport is you do actually get a black roof lining instead of the light colored roof lining Everything's black just to give it that more sporty finish and of course behind these seats is black so no red there so that can't get dirty which is good and of course black carpets and again a flat floor finish so you've got plenty of space even if you want to put three adults in the back so plenty of space <laughs> that's awesome and look at this the car that that's where i had the seat comfortably and look how much leg room and what's cool is i didn't show this in the luxury but all three rx's have this is seats which are on rails look at that so you can actually get a bigger boot if you wanted to by about a good what's that three inches there and likewise that seat can come forward and back as well so it's awesome and of course you do get your usb chargers at the back air conditioning vents and something else the f sport comes with is rear blinds so you can actually go whoosh and there you go you got a rear blind and a little bit of added protection, especially if you've got kids um, and they're going to go sleep. A little bit of added protection to the privacy glass that they automatically come with. Now, last but not least, let's have a look at the sports luxury and wow we That is sensational. This, they call this the rich cream leather seats. And look at this stitching, this fine stitching. Now, this does have this semi-aniline leather as well look at this nice soft seats now you'll notice these seats to actually look exactly like the luxury seats because these are now meant for luxury they're open they're not hugging at all now they're very soft as well and almost like a lounge chair they're so good and having a look at the steering wheel look at that the wood finish on the steering wheel now this is the open pour walnut from my memory and you get that here as well in the center console and on the door trims as well like that is incredibly soft but you can feel every groove in it it's just that's stunning now let's have a sit inside and have a quick look 
Now you may notice that even though this is the top of the range and you're spending the most money on it, it still doesn't have a digital display. <laughs> Lexus, where's my digital display? I'm spending over a hundred grand on a car without a digital display. Yes, it has a heads up display, but come on, give me a digital display. Oh, that's so annoying. But anyways, we do of course have our little, uh, that little screen there in the middle that shows our energy monitor and tire pressure and all sorts of goodies here. Coming off to the center, everything's the same again. And in the center console, now you may notice instead of a start stop button, it's a power button, part of the hybrid. Uh, and of course, all of our wood finish here, our charger there, charger's there, heating and cooling seat there. And of course, our electric handbrake and auto hold, everything here. You get the sports automatic as well, which is paddles there. Now this is a CVT, so you're not actually changing through gears, but you can still play around with it anyways. Coming off to the console here, you get one extra button. We got a steering wheel heater, look at that. So you can have nice warm hands while you're driving in the sports luxury. Now something the sports luxury gets as well is passenger side seat memory which is very cool actually speaking of the seats you do get a couple of extra functions you get four-way lumbar support now and you do get leg extenders so you can actually extend your legs so for those tall people who are blessed with such beautiful genetics you can actually extend the leg base to get more leg support now the sports luxury as well you do get this illuminated lexus scuff plate as well let's have a look at the back and what's awesome is, look at this, electric folding rear seats. So it's the same button that was at the back there, on the side here as well, look at that. Now, I, I want to sit in it, so we're going to go backwards. And we are in the sports luxury, so we do get a lighter material here. Now, because this is the cream interior, you get like a creamy style finish here. But otherwise, if you get like normal black, it's that sort of like grey colour in the luxury. But in the back here, you get these little uh, shades here as well. Bit of wood finish. Again, everything is the same down here, except you get two extra buttons because now you get heated seats for the outer two seats in the back. Talk about luxury! <laughs> oh, come on! That's awesome. Of course, plenty of headspace. Now, is it the same as the others? Almost a little bit shorter. A little bit shorter. It's like three, just struggling to get my four fingers there one finger less there you go and of course that big magnificent sunroof there that is just absolutely sensational and of course our little center console here with cup holders anyways guys that is a full rundown of all the and oh, my seat is getting hot Woo! oh that's hot <laughs> i forgot I turned on the seat heaters <laughs> anyways guys we have gone through all the interior all the exterior differences of all three cars let's take them for a drive let's see how the engines feel because again we got the 300 we got the 350 and we got the 450 so we are starting off in the rx 300 now even though we're driving the f sport model which is the middle of the range in terms of specs uh, this is the baby engine <laughs> it's the two liter turbocharged engine which produces 175 kilowatts and 350 newton meters of torque so it's not exactly a slow car but it's not exactly a uh fast car either so zero to 100 in this car is 9.2 seconds and in normal mode it <laughs> takes quite some time to pick up some speed <laughs> like <laughs> but you're probably not going to be buying this car for its speed because the rx 300 the reason that it even exists is because it's the entry level into a luxury SUV. Like, the engine has a nice note to it. The car itself is still the quiet car that you expect the RX to be. It's still, of course, the same sized car that you want it to be. And what's awesome about it is, it's about, in here in Australia, eight grand cheaper, eight or nine grand cheaper than the 350 and in the grand scheme of things when you're spending a hundred grand on a car eight grand is not a lot but it's still eight freaking grand <laughs> like the average person that buys a family SUV probably has some kids and they're probably taking them to school so they're driving from home to school 
maybe to the shops, maybe to work. They're not doing an amazing amount of driving. And you don't exactly need a big engine for that. Something like this is plenty enough. Like, wow, we got some wheel spin. <laughs> like, it's, it's plenty enough. Like, we got up to 70 there fairly quickly. And if your kids are running late to school, well, you'll probably still make it. <laughs> so, that's the reason why the RX300 exists. It's so somebody that wants to buy a luxury SUV that fits the whole family and then has a boot big enough to carry all the goodies as well can buy a luxury SUV. Like if I put this 300 next to the 350, next to the 450, all in the white with red leather seats in an F Sport trim, I couldn't tell the difference. Like the car's identical. So why spend more if you don't need to? Now, we will go through this when we do jump into the 350 and of course the 450, why you probably would buy one of them. But for the average user, this is plenty. <laughs> now, in each of the RXs, we're going to do four tests. We're going to do the uphill test. We're going to see how the car accelerates up the hill. We're going to do the zero to 60 test, see how they accelerate just on normal ground. Then we're going to do the rocky road test. And yes, we're going to drive on a patch of road, which is probably one of the worst I've driven on. And it's just like a bumpy test. Like we want to see how the car fares up. Now, in this F Sport, we're going to do it in both normal suspension mode and sport suspension mode. Uh, and the fourth test we're going to do is just a sway test. Again, in the F Sport, we're going to do regular mode and we're going to do sports plus mode, uh, which is the sports suspension. Okay, let's start off with the uphill test. I'm gonna stop next to a car and I'm gonna put my foot hard down until that third post there. Foot hard down, let's go. Oh, we got wheel spin. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. That was 80. That was surprising. Very surprising. It was, uh, if you noticed, very slow to pick up. Like, incredibly slow to pick up. Like, it didn't want to go. <laughs> but once it started going, and once it finished with its wheel spin, then it kept going, which was very nice. It's all like, because this car is turbocharged, it sort of had like that turbo lag almost. Um, but you do, what's interesting is, you don't exactly feel the turbos kick in. Um, but yeah, there you go. That's the uphill test. Now, in all the cars, we're gonna do it all in normal mode, just to be fair. Um, and we're all gonna do it from a standstill, stop next to that car, up three posts. And now we are here to the Rocky Road test. Normal suspension. You hear a lot of it. There's a bit of movement in the car. Oh. Yep, you feel it in the seat. Oh, horrible road. Okay, I will say this. If I had some music on, and I wasn't concentrating on it, it would be all right, but I felt a lot of it. There was a lot of movement in the car, a lot of shaking, a lot of vibrations, and that was a normal drive mode as well. So now we're going to try this test again, but we're going to go into sports plus mode. Oh, that's a lot harder. Can you, you can probably hear that a lot more. Oh, I'm getting a lot of, a lot of vibrations. And not the pleasant part. That was a lot of vibrations. <laughs> oh, wow. Yes, so in Sports Plus mode, you can feel a lot more. <laughs> okay, let's go back into normal mode. And now we're going 50 k's an hour. We're going to do a sway test in normal mode, left and right. <sighs> The seats are very hugging, very supportive. 
I felt a lot of roll in the car. Like, as soon as the car went left, it wanted to stay going left. That was interesting. Let's try that one more time. Let's go into Sports Plus. The suspension mode in Sports Plus. Let's try that again. Go right. Oh, a lot tighter. A lot tighter. Let's try that one more time. Yeah, you see a lot of body roll still. A lot of body roll. The front... The front of the car, I could feel like it was like tipping into the front of the car. How interesting. How interesting. Now we're going to do a zero to 60 test and foot hard down. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it goes. Can't say it doesn't go. <laughs> Again, as you've seen with the uphill test, it's very slow to get going. But once it does, it just keeps going. Like, how do I explain? You can't, like, like I said earlier, that it feels like there's a turbo lag, but it's not as if like you can feel the turbo go. There's not like a sudden burst of power. No, it's very gradual. It's very, um, it's very linear, is that the right word? I don't think it is. It's very consistent. It's very consistent, that's the right word. It's very consistent with how it accelerates and once you're going, it's it's good to go. Now, while we're in the RX300, I do want to mention that as nice as the car is, of course it's a Lexus, it's always going to drive nice. Uh, there is a couple of things which I don't exactly like about it. The biggest thing for me is the engine note like it sounds like a four-cylinder turbo engine you know and it it's nothing to do against Lexus it's just compared to the other two and this is the biggest thing because we have all three of them to compare we're comparing them <laughs> like we have the other two as points of reference and compared to the other two under load this is a lot louder um, regular driving like this it's probably like fractionally louder, like. but wonder load, as you saw in our uphill test and our zero to 60 test, it's a lot louder and it's just not as pleasant when you do need to give it that burst of power as the other two. And the second thing that I don't like about it is how slow it is to pick up. Like from a standstill, it's very slow to pick up. And yes, once you're going, it's not bad, but when you're in normal mode, it takes forever for it to pick a gear and actually give you the power that you need. In Sports Plus, it's a lot better, but when you need it, like you see, I put my foot down, it just went from 2,500 RPM, and instead of gearing down a little bit, it just kept trying to pull from 2,500 RPM. And that's the biggest thing that I dislike about the 300 is it doesn't give you that power when you need it. Uh, but anyways, let's jump in the 350 and let's see how that feels. <laughs> now we're driving the 350 and you can tell the difference instantly. Just instantly you can tell the difference. Oh man. Now, this is a V6 naturally aspirated which has 221 kilowatts of power and 370 newton meters of torque and boy what an engine what an engine if you've ever watched my video on the is versus is versus is you will know how much i love this engine i think it's just a work of art now a few differences to point out which i may not have mentioned in the 300 is the 300 is a two-wheel drive and this is an all-wheel drive and that's why we're getting such good wheel spin in the 300 when we're doing the uphill test in the 0 to 60 uh, which we're probably not going to get in this car here because again it's an all-wheel drive now um it does have more power than the 300 and as you can see it effortlessly picks up speed now the other difference between the 300 and the 350 is not only the engine not only the all-wheel drive, is that this car has more gears. It has now an 8-speed automatic 
instead of a six speed automatic, which means it can pick up speed a lot easier as well. And it can pick the right gear for you to pick up speed as well. Because if I put my foot down now, yeah, that picked the right gear very quickly. Unlike the 300, which was struggling to find the right gear. But anyways, 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 um, we are now driving a luxury edition, which means we're in the entry level. And yes, we are driving the enhancement package. So it's still an entry level, uh, but this one does have the panoramic sunroof and it does have the heads up display, which the heads up display for most is very handy. Uh, this is just a nice luxury feature to have, you know. Um, would I get the luxury with the enhancement pack? Probably. Uh, but an option of five grand from memory. Yeah, it's around five grand for a sunroof and a heads up display. Um, I'll think twice about it. I'll think twice about it because I'm not the biggest heads up display user. Like now it's on, it's actually annoying me. So I turned that off. Um, sunroof, I love a good sunroof, but unfortunately with my balding head, I need to wear a hat, uh, but I don't like wearing hats. <laughs> so I would rather keep this closed during the day and open at the nighttime if I had it. Now, as part of the luxury, we have these very luxurious seats. You may notice that these ones don't have the hugging bolsters that the F-Sport had. And for good reason, it's not the F-Sport, it doesn't need them. It's like a freaking lounge chair. Like, they're so soft. Oh, I, I, I love these seats. I love these seats. And the only thing that gets better is when we do jump into the sports luxury, the seats are semi-aniline leather. So they're even softer and even more luxurious. And you feel like a king or a queen and you feel just, oh, you just sink into them. Anyways, anyways. So let's start off with the uphill test and we've parked up next to the same car. Foot hard down, let's go. Oh, whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> wow okay <laughs> that one got off got off but this is interesting it <laughs> a v6 power v6 power still again just in normal mode not sports mode we're not doing this in sports mode only in normal mode it only got up to 85 it only <laughs> like how interesting but 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 it got there a lot quicker than the 300. I will say that much. Like that pushed me back into my seat. <laughs> Far out. I was not expecting that. Now, here we are, here we are. Let's do the rocky road test. Let's see how this feels. Now, be mindful. They all have 20 inch wheels. All the same size wheels. So let's see how this fares up. Lot of movement, lot of movement in the car. Yep. Now, here's the thing, I'm feeling a lot in the car, but not in my bottom. My bottom is incredibly well cushioned. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so. That one definitely felt nicer than the 300. But, I'm going to mention this. The F Sports do have a harder seat. So these are very soft, very plush. And the F Sports are a lot harder. So, so you feel a lot more in the F Sports seat. And I'm not saying it has anything to do with the suspension cell because when we jump into a Sports Luxury, which has the adaptive dampers as well, it's going to feel more like this than did the F Sport. Because again, it's got the softer seats. So yes, I found a lot of movement in the car but I didn't feel a lot of vibrations in my tushy. That's a good, that's a good uh, analysis. That's my analysis. Anyways, let's do the sway test. Let's go. It's only normal mode. So let's go right to left. Wow, wow, wow. That is, that is not direct at all. Let's try that again. Oh my goodness. 
That was not pleasant. I was rolling about in there. Oh wow, wait, let's, let's, let's try one more time, one more time. Let's go left to right. Oh, a lot of body roll, a lot of body roll. And one thing I noticed is the steering is just not as direct. There we go, a lot, a lot of roll. I found a lot of roll in the tires as well. That was interesting, that was interesting. The last test, sports mode is on. Zero to 60, foot hard down, let's go. Keep going, keep going. <laughs> wow, <laughs> I love this engine. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. Oh, and that note. Okay, remember how in the 300, we were talking about the engine note. Notice how this isn't as loud. It's not as jarring. It's just, it's just got this roar almost. It's got this, oh. oh. It's, it's so much nicer balanced. It's just smoother overall. Oh, it's just such a beautiful engine. Oh, I love it. I love it. Oh, it's so good. And the gearbox, it actually, puts you in the right gear, the gear it needs to be to give you the acceleration you want. Ah, oh, oh yes, back to normal mode, back to normal mode. Oh, what a beautiful engine, what a beautiful engine. I understand why people spend eight grand more for this car. I really, truly do. Now, do I think everyone needs to go do it? By no means, by no means, but, oh, for that eight grand, you are getting Plenty of smiles, plenty of smiles. Now, another thing we should have to mention, <laughs> with all this power, does mean you're spending more fuel. And by a considerable amount, like combined fuel usage on this car is 9.6 liters per 100 Ks. And if you're just talking city driving, it's 13 and a half liters per 100 kilometers. <laughs> Like, that's insane. And let's face it, that's in the best world scenario. So, it's probably going to be a little bit more than that again. Whereas the 300 combined is 8.1 liters per 100 Ks. And in the city, it's 10.1. So, a whole 3.4 liters less per 100 Ks. So, there's something else to think about. Now, it is a little bit interesting though, because on the highway... The 350 is 7.3 litres per 100 k's, and the 300 is 7.1 litres per 100 k's. So it just goes to show the bigger engine, when it's opened up on the highway, in the highest gear, it's going to be using literally the same amount of fuel as a four-cylinder. And it's really where I recommend to people buy a V6 is when they are doing the highway driving, when they are utilising all of that. Anyways, last but not least, Let's jump in the 450. Now, we are finally in the RX 450H, and this is a pleasure to drive. It is, ah, oh, ah, oh, so beautiful, ah, oh, so soft, ah, oh, ah, oh, lovely, lovely. Now, this is the hybrid variant, and not only that, we're in the sports luxury side, top of the range, but before we talk about the seats and all the other good stuff, let's talk about the engine. So, this is the same 3.5 liter V6 engine which the RX 350 has. But the difference is, it is now thrusted by electric power. It has batteries in the car, which make this car rather powerful. And even though it is a little bit heavier than the 350 or even the 300 because of the extra batteries, it's actually quicker as well. So, here we have a 3.5 liter V6 with the electric hybrid support, together, combined, produces 230 kilowatts. Now, out of the engine itself is 193 kilowatts and 335 newton meters of torque, but this car can do zero to 100 in 7.7 .7 seconds. That's pretty impressive. <laughs> and 
without using all the fuel, might I add. Because, because we've spoken about the 350 and how much fuel that thing took. Here, in the hybrid, it does 5.7 liters per 100 Ks combined. And you might be thinking, oh yeah, but around town, so you're going to be spending more fuel. No, you're not. It's still 5.7 liters for 100 Ks, even around town, because what a lot of people don't know is the hybrid works better around town. It works more in electric mode, actually, around town than it does on the highway. Because like now, we're in electric mode. I got a little EV sticker here, which says we're in electric mode. And as soon as it goes into power, we're in petrol, EV, petrol, EV, petrol. Like, it's always doing its own thing. And that's the best thing about it. Like, around town, you're going to save so much fuel. So much fuel with the hybrid. But, there's always a but. Here in Australia, here in Australia, the most entry level hybrid costs a hundred and two grand drive away. The most entry level RX three hundred costs eighty two grand drive away. That's a twenty grand difference. <laughs> like, come on! Are you ever going to use the car so much that you can justify? A 20 grand difference that is the question like like do you see where I'm going with this like the hybrids amazing and driving it look at it it's serene it's so quiet like turn off the air conditioner it's quiet. even when it goes into petrol mode it's hard to tell electric petrol electric petrol Anyways, anyways, that's a question I'm going to let you decide whether or not you should get the hybrid. But all I can say is this. The hybrid is a very smooth drive. Very smooth drive. And the fact that it's quickest out of all of them and uses the least fuel is a bonus as well. Like, like you can't go wrong. You can't go wrong. And let's face it, if you can afford to spend it, why not? But anyways, let's talk about the car. This is a CVT transmission which means there's no gears. There's no gears in the car. That means that when you go to accelerate, it's just one constant acceleration. It doesn't go there's no, there's no changes in gear, so it's constantly accelerating. Which means that under load, when, when we do our tests, you might find this to be a little bit louder, a little bit louder. So speaking of, let's do the test. Let's do the uphill test up next to this car okay for a full stop and let's go today maybe we're we gonna make it <laughs> intriguing intriguing okay there we go so out of all three cars which one do you think was fastest I'll tell you right now, it wasn't this car. <laughs> oh, wow. So, to the same point as the other two cars, it got up to 80 k's per hour. It's like when I put my foot hard down, it didn't know what to do. Like, it turned on the engine straight away because it realized that I needed full power. But it was very slow to accelerate. How interesting. How interesting. Okay, here we are. Let's do the rocky road test. Now, this does have the adaptive variable suspension, but we're only going to do this in normal mode. Okay, here we go. You can hear a lot of it. Yeah, you can feel the car moving. It's absorbing it very nicely. Yeah, it's absorbing it very nicely. That's interesting. Out of the three, I think this absorbed the most. There you go. This and the 350 were very close, very close. And you see, it's got the same suspension itself as the F Sport, so still had the adaptive variable suspension. 
But the reason it was softer is because these lounge seats that we're sitting on, oh, they're so good. They're so soft and this leather. I can't explain how soft this is. It's just oh, so pleasant. Oh, so pleasant. Oh. And we're going to find out really how soft they are because now we're going to do the sway test and we're going to feel all of the seat now. Oh, I'm not looking forward to this one. <laughs> I'm not looking forward to this one. Well, let's go left to right. That was surprisingly tighter. That one was... Hold up, hold up. Let's try that again. Let's try that again. She's a lot tighter. But, oh, but the car, the car, the car. That is a lot tighter. I, I, I'm, we, okay, we're in Sports Plus, let's get to 50. Let's try this again. So, I can feel the tire roll. I can feel the tire roll. The steering is not as, how do I put it? Not as direct. Let's try one more time, one more time. Let's go back into normal. Let's go back to 50. Whoa! Wow, that was crazy. That was crazy. Did you forget to lock a car? Oh, the turning circles. Horrendous. So, if you do it very quickly, if you do it very quickly, the whole car wants to go with you. But I felt that to be tighter than the 350 or the 300. It could have to do with all the extra weight. Um, there was a lot of tire roll. I felt the tire roll. But overall, pretty impressive. Now, last but not least. The 0 to 60 test and sports mode, put hard down, let's go. so weird so weird wow how do i explain it you can't feel gears changing so it's just like it was uh can't say it was that much louder than the 350 i wouldn't say it was that much quieter than the 350 it's like it's like the faster it got the faster it wanted to go that was the weirdest part like it was sort of like it just kept pulling, like the higher, the faster I was going, it just kept pulling harder and harder. Wow. There you go. <laughs> this is your 260 test. So you notice how it's just, it, under load, it's just like one big drone. But that's the thing. When you buy a car like this, you're not going to be doing that in it. Um, so most of the time it's quiet like this and you can whisper and you can talk and not lose your voice like I have. <laughs> oh, wow. That was a weird sensation. <laughs> now guys, we're going to answer the question that we started off with in the beginning. Which one should you buy and why? Now, as you might have heard me while I was driving, I was talking about the nuances of all these cars, like the pricing differences, um, the fuel savings, the power differences, the comfort levels. And really to everyone, they're going to be a little bit different. Now, I've simplified it like this. If you just go to work and back and surround the corner or you're doing the school drop-off and you just need a big family car or you need something to the shops and back, the RX 300 is a perfect fit. Like, you're not going to utilize the power of the 350, you're not going to get the fuel savings of the 450 and 
it's still the same luxury SUV. So the RX300 is perfect for that. Now, if you're somebody that does highway driving and you're going up and down the highway and um, you're doing that more often than not, maybe two or three times a week, and you like a little bit more power and you're still doing all the other stuff as well, the 350 is an awesome car because the reason I say highway and you're doing it often is on the highway, it picks up speed really quickly and it's still just as fuel efficient as the 300. And you'll really love that softness to the car, that softer V6 feeling to the car. That doesn't mean that if you have the 300, you can't go on the highway. It's that if you're doing it more often, you're going to enjoy it a lot more in the 350. Now, the 450, this is where it gets interesting. Because if you do a lot of driving, the 450 is definitely the way to go. And you still need a bigger car and all the rest of it. Because as we spoke about briefly while we were driving the car, you're spending almost 10 grand more to buy a hybrid car. And yes, the fuel savings is literally almost half. So you will get the fuel savings over the long term. But you really have to think about it over the long term. You really have to keep the car for a long time and really do a lot of driving to really feel the savings in your pocket. Anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed that one. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe. And as always, guys, see you on the next one. You do get keyless entry and keyless start. And when the car detects that you're coming up to it and it's darker, it actually shows these little lights underneath the door handles. And keyless entry is actually from all four doors. So I can actually just open the car from the back and lock it from the back as well. That's pretty cool. Maybe get their hair done as well. And this is a horrible hairdo and my overgrown beard. By the way, how do you like it? Do you like it? Once we do drive the 350. Ah! Will he fit? Yes, you can fit yourself out as well. So there you go. Whew. <sighs>